Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm really excited to share my big bookish Christmas gift guide with you all today. You may already know that I've done a little stocking filler gift guide last week, but today I'm sharing loads of book recommendations that I hope you'll find useful. I've really tried to have something for everyone with these recommendations and I'm categorising them. So I've got books for nature lovers for instance, I've got cookbooks, I've got novels and lots of non-fiction reads as well. And for the most part these are all books that have come out in 2021. So there have been some amazing books this year, I think these would all make amazing presents for the winter holidays and I hope you enjoy my recommendations, they'll all be linked below of course. I've got so many to get through so let's get going. First of all I did want to share a couple of little books, I didn't share these in my stocking gift guide and I wanted to chat about them today because I think these will make lovely gifts either just as a small present or even to slip in a Christmas stocking. So this first one is A Scandinavian Christmas, Festive Tales for a Nordic Noel and I think the cover on this is absolutely stunning, just so beautiful. And this is a little collection of both modern Scandinavian stories and also traditional tales. Some of them are cosier than others, but I think this would just be a really attractive little volume to open on Christmas Day and to read through the winter. And then this one has been a real favourite of mine in 2021 and it's really a lovely little volume for any lover of classic literature and Jane Austen in particular. That's Jane Austen's Universal Truths, Wisdom and Witticisms from her writing and it's collected by Susan Hart Byers. So these are lots of quotes by Jane Austen all gathered together in this little book. I love it because it's illustrated by Polly Fern, who's a favourite female illustrator of mine. She's based in Norfolk, she does beautiful ceramics as well as prints, so you might also want to maybe buy a little print from her, or a notebook or card, and together with this book that would make such a lovely gift. There's the cover, and Polly Fern has also done some really beautiful illustrations all through the book. Any fans of persuasion will recognise that scene, I think. <laughs> so there are lots of lovely illustrations by Polly Fern, and they just add such a nice whimsical touch to the wonderful words of Jane Austen. So if there are any Janeites in your life, then this is definitely a perfect gift for them. And then Really what I want to show you now are some gorgeous editions of classic books. So for any bibliophiles in your lives, I think that these books will make fantastic gifts because they're just so special. So this edition of Little, Wo of Little Women is truly gorgeous. It's curated by Barbara Heller and it's just come out uh, this autumn. And the idea is that as you read through the book, you come across these little folders and inside there are some of the letters and notes and little manuscripts of the main characters in the book and you unfold them yourself. So you can see that this is an amazing little note written from Laurie to Joe and just the detail that has gone into the type of paper, the way it's slightly stained looking so it's aged, it's just amazing and these have been done by top calligraphers who really think carefully about the sort of style of penmanship and what suits each character and this is a note from Mrs. March to Joe. I love how neat and beautiful her penmanship is. 
and you just get such a feel of the characters through getting to read their notes. I absolutely love it. Barbara Heller did a similar edition of Pride and Prejudice last year, which I also have, but I was so thrilled when Little Women came out too. Of course, Little Women is a real classic Christmas story too, with its famous line of Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without any presents. So I think that this would be such a wonderful gift for any bibliophile in your life. And then this was actually a birthday present that I got this year and it's absolutely stunning. It was just brought out by the Folio Society and it's a really gorgeous edition of Venetia by Georgette Hare. I love Georgette Hare's Regency romances. Again, if you love Jane Austen, you would definitely enjoy Georgette Hare. People always ask me which novel by Georgette Hare I would recommend starting with if you're new to her books. Venetia, I think, is probably my very favourite, at least one of my very favourites of hers, and it would be a great place to start. And this edition is truly stunning. It's also illustrated throughout. And I think it's so special to have such gorgeous artwork. And the front and back cover is just really stunning as well. So this will make a very special gift. And folio books always do such beautiful books. I think it's always an amazing present to get a very special book like this for an occasion like Christmas or birthdays. And then this has been another favourite from this year, a stunning annotated edition of Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. So there are so many interesting notes on the novel that are made throughout the book. There's a little map of Mrs Dalloway's walk through London, so you could follow the walk and do it yourself, follow the route, which I think is fabulous. But really interesting notes and I think that having this edition would really add to your understanding and love of this very classic book as well. So really recommend this one. And then this book actually wasn't brought out just this last year, but I still wanted to include it in my gift guide this year because I only discovered it in 2021. And it's such a charming gift for any bibliophile or any young reader maybe in particular in your life. It's A Velocity of Being, Letters to a Young Reader, edited by Maria Popova and Claudia Bedrick. And this is a really stunning collection of letters written by famous writers as well as musicians and just other inspiring people. And they've written letters to a young reader. And so it's these people sharing their love for literature and how books have shaped their lives. And it's a stunning collection. Again, each letter is illustrated and there are lots of different illustrators used in the book so I think it's really exquisitely put together and it also says that all proceeds from the sale of this book will benefit the New York Public Library system which I think is really wonderful too so a fabulous idea for a Christmas gift and then I wanted to share a few gorgeous coffee table style books with you that would make very special Christmas gifts so this one is Hill House Living, The Art of Creating a Joyful Life by Paula Sutton. Paula Sutton is the amazing woman behind Hill House Vintage, which is a wonderful Instagram account, one of my very favourites. And this is a perfect book for anyone who loves cottagecore, who loves a bit of chin chintz <laughs> and who just loves that sort of English decor style and this is a really lovely book full of inspiration about creating a beautiful home as well as simple ideas to just live life a bit more beautifully. She's got ideas on sort of how to resurrect old pieces of furniture 
and make them more beautiful. There are also gorgeous images shared of her home in Norfolk and there are lots of ideas for living life a bit more seasonally as well as beautifully in this too. So I think it's a charming book and it would make a lovely, lovely present. So definitely one I've been enjoying and this just came out in 2021 as well. So really lovely one. Then this book, Stamps and Stamps, is truly stunning. This will make such a gorgeous book to display on your coffee table. Again, it's just full of beautiful home decor inspiration. So if anyone in your life is really interested in their home and in home decor generally, this will make such a stunning book. Again, um, although this is by an American author, I believe. There's a lot of British inspiration in terms of home decor in this. So I absolutely love flicking through this and just getting some ideas. There's lots of chintz, lots of florals, and I absolutely adore that. So this is a stunning book that I so recommend. And I love the title, Style and Sensibility. <laughs> That's just perfect. Then this book was just brought out by Petersham Nurseries this year and it's one of the most beautiful coffee table books I have ever seen. It is truly special. I'll film a little cutaway here so you can see some of the inside because the photography is glorious. Petersham Nursery is an amazing plant shop as, as well as a restaurant and cafe in Richmond in London. I used to go there so often when I lived nearby and it's a very, very special place, really beautiful. Mum and I would go every winter to buy Christmas decorations there and we have so many happy memories both from the shop and from the cafe and restaurant. This book really brings Petersham to life. It's full of recipes as well as beautiful photos of Petersham Nurseries itself and there's a history of the family who founded Petersham and their values in creating this family-run business. It's a really interesting read as well as just a truly gorgeous book to look at and I think it's my favourite coffee table book that I have. This would definitely make a very special gift for anyone in your life who loves food, who loves nature, and maybe in particular who loves London and is a fan of Petersham Nurseries. Okay, so I'm going to get my next lot of books now, <laughs> of another little pile, and I'll share those with you. Okay, I'm back with a really big pile of non-fiction books to share with you now. So I think these books will appeal to lots of different types of people. First up, I want to share this gorgeous edition of Edinburgh by Robert Louis Stevenson. It's introduced by Alexander McCall Smith and the stunning cover art is by Ian McIntosh, who also did some of the little chapter heading illustrations inside the book too. So you can see it there and this really stunning cover artwork. This book has been published by Mandalay Press which is a new female-run independent publishing company and this was just brought out a few weeks ago. I think it's been stunningly done. I love the cloth bound spine and then the beautiful cover of course is very special. This sounds like such a fun read for anyone who loves Edinburgh or loves the writing of Robert Louis Stevenson. This was first written by him I think 150 years ago and it's his guide to the city as it was then but it still makes a fascinating read for anyone who loves Edinburgh nowadays as well. So I think that's just such a lovely little book and would be a wonderful gift. Then this is another really beautiful book by another independent publishing company, Slightly Foxed. 
And this is called Letters to Michael, A Father Writes to His Son, and the letters are collected from 1945 to 1947. And this is such a sweet book, it would make a really lovely gift to a dad. You can see that every letter is illustrated, and Slightly Fox have just put this together so beautifully. I love how even the stamps have been illustrated. And it's a collection of such charming letters from father to son. It's a real ode to fatherhood, and it's very, very touchingly done, and I think it's just been beautifully put together. So, another gorgeous book from Slightly Foxed. Then this book I got this year when a friend of mine was going through a, a bit of a hard time and I wanted to read some books that I thought might help me in keeping them a bit more cheerful, sort of knowing how to help someone. And I got a few books and one of them was The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. He's written so much on mental health and I got some of his other books as well. But I thought this one is such a sweet book. It's for anyone who maybe needs a bit of cheering up as we all do sometimes in our life. It's full of just little... <laughs> musings in a way. For instance, this one, Toast, he says, continually looking for the meaning of life is like looking for the meaning of toast. It is sometimes better just to eat the toast. <laughs> so little sort of musings, um, some offers of advice, some words on truth and courage and wisdom, but it's all sort of bound together in a way that you can just dip in and out of this book and it will just leave you feeling that bit more cheerful, hopefully, um, whenever you dive into it. So I think this is quite a sweet book to give someone, perhaps particularly in the winter when a lot of people can struggle a bit with their emotions and with their mental health in the winter. And this is just a nice little book to have by your bedside and to dip in and out of. And then I've got a few biographies that I wanted to share. So one of the biggest, to me, <laughs> biographies that came out in 2021 is this one, The Adventures of Miss Barbara Pym by Paula Byrne. I love Barbara Pym's books. I've been rereading them through the course of this year in anticipation of reading the biography. I've heard such amazing things about this and I can't wait to dive in. You can see it's quite a definitive biography and I'm so pleased because Barbara Pym such an amazing writer and she deserves a really good biography. So I'm so glad that one has been written and this would be an amazing gift for anyone in your life who also loves Barbara Pym or is interested in female writers that have been neglected, sadly, um, far too much in the past, but Barbara Pym seems to be having a bit of a comeback, which is wonderful and I think this biography will make wonderful reading. And then, I loved this biography. It's called Flower Diary, in which Mary Heister Reed plants, tra paints, travels, marries, and opens a door by Molly Peacock. Molly Peacock wrote The Paper Garden, which I know many people love, and this is a biography of hers that came out just this year, and it's about the Canadian artist Mary Heister Reed. She was married to uh, George Reed, a male artist, but they had um, a very companionable marriage, and Mary Reed was still encouraged to paint herself, which was unusual for this time, the sort of early 1900s. And this is beautifully illustrated. Let me see. You can see some of her artwork as well as some of George's artwork all through the book. Um, I think it's been put together so well. There are so many colour um, pieces of art shown in this that are really 
stunning. And um, George Reed is someone who is in my own family tree. So I was particularly interested, of course, to read this biography of his wife. I'm also very interested in female artists and so this was a fascinating read and if you're interested too in female artists she did a lot of botanical paintings as well which are stunning as shown in here um, and of course if you're interested in Canadian artists in particular I'm half Canadian so that explains that connection then this would be a really wonderful book then I was thrilled to pick up this book, Two Way Mirror, by Fiona Sampson. It's a biography of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. I love her poetry and I very much am looking forward to discovering more of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's life. I really admire Fiona Sampson, who is herself a poet as well as a biographer. I read her biography of Mary Shelley and I interviewed Fiona about that quite a few years ago now. So I was really excited to see that she had a new biography out and I think this will be a really, really interesting read and would be a great gift to give someone, again, who is interested in female poets perhaps or who enjoys biographies in particular. Then a couple for fashion lovers. This biography of Dior's sister, Miss Dior, A Story of Courage and Couture by Justine Picardi. This is absolutely stunning. Again, there are so many illustrations and photographs all through this book. Um, Catherine Dior had a remarkable life. She was part of the French resistance during World War II and she was sent to a concentration camp during the war but she survived it and after that experience um, really threw herself into creating a beautiful garden and she was such an inspiration to her brother um, both in terms of the clothing he designed and also the perfumes. This book just came out this autumn and I think it's stunning. It would be such a great gift for any fashionistas as well as book lovers in your life. And it also came out to coincide with a new Misty All perfume. Let's see if you can see that. There you are. And I absolutely love this perfume. It's stunning. I'm wearing it today actually and it's just oh it's really beautiful it's quite light but the scent is a lovely mix of sort of floral and I don't know maybe slightly spicy I just I really really like it so a gift of the perfume with the book if you want to go that extra mile would be an amazing present and then for someone who's maybe a bit interested in the history of textiles, then this book, Fabric, The Hidden History of the Material World by Victoria Finlay, would be really wonderful. It says, how is handmade fabric helping save an ancient forest? Why is a famous fabric pattern from India best known by the name of the Scottish town? How is a Chinese dragon robe a diagram of the whole universe? What is the difference between how the Greek fakes, fates and the Viking norns use threads to tell our destiny? In Fabric, best-selling author fin Victoria Finlay spins us round the globe, weaving stories of our relationship with cloth and asking how and why people through the ages have made it, worn it, invented it and made symbols out of it. I actually just recently got this myself and I thought it sounds absolutely fascinating. I'm very interested in the history of clothing as well as textiles so I think this will be such an interesting read and it would be a lovely Christmas gift as well. Then for anyone who's interested in architecture and in English country houses in particular this is a really beautiful book the Story of the Country House, A History of Places and People by Clive Azlett. I love that this book is illustrated. There are a lot of colour illustrations and this history of the sort of British country house 
is really fascinating. It looks at architecture more generally, as well as having some specific examples of houses um, throughout the UK. And it's just really well put together. And I love that there are colour illustrations and, pho and photographs in this. The cover is so beautiful too. I think that will just be a really wonderful book to open up on Christmas Day. And then a bit of history. I think this is a really fun uh, history book, a slightly more irre irreverent and yeah, entertaining read, not too dry. That's Meet the Georgians, Epic Tales from Britain's Wildest Century by Robert Peel. And it says, this book tells the story of the Georgian period through 12 extraordinary characters. So it looks at 12 people from history, from the Georgian period, and how they transformed and affected um, Georgian Britain, essentially. So for any history buffs in your life, this would be a good choice. And then this is a fascinating looking book. Again, it just came out in 2021, and that's Going to Church in Medieval England by Nicholas Orme. Anyone you know who is particularly interested in churches or in medieval history, I think that this would be such a great pick. Um, it looks like it's full of really fascinating insights into how exactly people went to church, what that experience was like um, through all different seasons of the year as well. And it's meant to be very well researched and I think would just be a really fascinating read. So this is one I'm looking forward to getting to myself. As is this book too, Hidden Hands, The Lives of Manuscripts and Their Makers by Mary Wesley, um, or Wellesley. And in this book, she examines the history of ancient manuscripts and I think illuminated manuscripts in particular, there are some really gorgeous photos included um, showing the types of manuscripts and books that are looked at. And it's just so interesting. I think, again, any bibliophile would find this a very fascinating history um, because, of course, it is a history of books as well and I think that this is just a really interesting looking non-fiction choice for so many people. So one I recommend. And now I'm going to get my next category to share with you. So from my non-fiction recommendations we move to my fiction recommendations. I love to have a special Christmas book to read in the winter holidays and this new edition of The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding, a selection of short stories by Agatha Christie, is just stunning. Look at that cover. I think that's gorgeous and this will make such a fun read to enjoy over the Christmas holidays, so highly recommended. And then also this year, um, a special edition was brought out of the Tuesday Club Murders, again by Agatha Christie. These are some of the Miss Marple short stories, and they are amongst my very, very favourite Agatha Christie short stories. They're so much fun to read. It's the perfect book to curl up with in front of the fireplace and just thoroughly enjoy a bit of a cosy mystery. Then I wanted to share my top two reprints of the year. So earlier in the spring I read The Feast by Margaret Kennedy. Faber Books just republished this book this year. It's set over a summer in Cornwall and I absolutely loved it. There were some characters that you loved to hate and there were some lovely characters too in this and it was just such a witty, interesting story about a group of hotel guests who at the start of the book you discover that the cliffside has collapsed onto this hotel. So you know that there are some survivors but you don't know who those survivors are. Then the story goes back in time, you meet all of these guests 
than the hotel owners, you get to know their stories, and as you read you're very much hoping that some people survive and some don't. <laughs> but you have to read it to see what happens. But I loved this book and it was one of my favourite reprints from the year. It would make a lovely Christmas present. My other favourite reprint of the year I only actually read very recently and that's Sally on the Rocks by Winifred Boggs. This is part of the British Library Women Writers series. This was such a fun book. It's set during World War One, and it's about a young woman called Sally who decides that now she's in her 30s, she's got to get sensible and down to business. <laughs> Love isn't a matter of romance, it's a matter of business for her. And she decides to go after a wealthy bachelor. But of course, the love to true love or even marriage <laughs> doesn't always run smooth and things get a bit more complicated when Sally meets an ex-soldier and isn't sure whether to follow her head or her heart. Anyway, I really enjoyed this book and it would make another fun gift for Christmas. Out of the new novels that were just published this year, I wanted to chat about this one, A Single Thread of Moonlight by Laura Wood. This is a YA book and it would make, I think, a lovely choice for any younger readers in your life. It's also a great book for adults too. I'm a big fan of Laura Wood's YA fiction. I recently read A Snowfall of Silver by her, which is set in the 1920s in London. It's about a young girl who wants to become an actress and it's a lovely wintry and Christmassy read. This has just come out this autumn, so it's Laura Wood's newest book. It's set in the sort of late Victorian era, I think, and it's meant to be a Cinderella-inspired story. Again, it starts out in the autumn, but goes on through into the winter. So I'm looking forward to curling up with this one myself over December. And her books are always lovely, sort of light romances and just really cosy reads. So I think this would make a really nice, light, cosy choice for the winter holidays. Then this book... The Country of Others by Leila Slimani is one of the books that I really enjoyed reading that just came out in 2021. I'm such a fan of Leila Slimani's writing and I was really looking forward to the publication of this novel this year. I think it would make a great gift. For one reason, it's the first in a new trilogy that Leila Slimani is writing. And this trilogy is apparently sort of loosely based on the lives of her grandparents. This book is about a young French woman called Mathilde who ends up going to Morocco with her new husband and making her life there. She has children, she helps her husband work on the farm. And this is really an incredible book all about different cultures, about um, sex and power and race and family and you can tell it's the start of a real family saga and it just really evokes a particular time and place so well. Um, the descriptions of the Moroccan cities and landscapes are absolutely stunning and this was a really memorable read for me from 2021. So I think this would make a great fiction choice that would appeal to many different people. So definitely one I recommend. Then one of my other favourite books from this year was um, Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I love this special edition of it and this was just one of those books I just sat down and read really quickly because I was utterly gripped by the story. Um, it's set in a sort of future world of some unknown date where it's very customary for people to employ robots essentially as companions, especially for their children. Uh, in this time in the future, people who are wealthy at least can afford to genetically modify themselves and to make themselves and their children both more intelligent as well as more attractive. 
But in this book, which is really about human connection, as well as loneliness, it's shown how dangerous that can be. And it's very much a book about the power of love and of human connection over anything else. It's a really, really moving book and one that just stays with you for a very long time. So another one I really recommend, one of my favorite fiction books from the past year. If you want two books that are a bit lighter, because those last two are definitely a bit darker, then Yours Cheerfully by AJ Pierce just came out this year. It's the follow-up book to Dear Mrs. Bird, and it's about a young female journalist during World War II. It's so fun, it's so light-hearted, even though it still does deal with some of the tragedy of war, obviously, and deeper issues surrounding women's lives and how women were affected by war and the war effort um, at home in Britain. This still manages to be such a heartwarming, life-affirming kind of read. Of course, I really recommend getting Dear Mrs. Bird too, but you don't have to have read Mrs. Dear Mrs. Bird to still love this book. And if you know anyone who is a fan of AJ Pierce, but doesn't have this yet, then this will make a really wonderful Christmas present. There's a lovely Christmassy wedding scene at the end as well that's really charming. So yeah, a lovely choice. And then another more light-hearted read is You're in a Hedgehog by Alexander McCall Smith. This is part of the Professor Dr. Von Eagelfeld books by him. I absolutely love this series all about a linguistics professor in Germany who is very stuffy <laughs> um, and often oblivious to the motivations of other people. But this is just a, another slim, light-hearted, funny read by Alexander McCall Smith, and I'm sure will make a charming Christmas gift. So now we've done fiction, let's move on to the next category. Okay, so I have a few poetry recommendations for you next. The first book I want to recommend would be such a gorgeous gift for any children in your life. I have to say I love it too though. <laughs> and this collection is called Everyone Sang, A Poem for Every Feeling, and it's collected by William C. Cart, and it's illustrated by Emily Sutton, who is another of one of my very favourite illustrators. This book is utterly charming. You can see the large pages with the really gorgeous illustrations. There's a real diverse collection of poetry, which I really love. Of course, this anthology is geared to young readers, but it's also a delightful collection for adults. However, it'd be such a special gift for any child. I think this is stunning and it really enhances the beauty of poetry for young readers as well and that love of language that's so important. The illustrations match every poem really beautifully too, so this is definitely a very special anthology. Then also for younger people, but adults enjoy this series a lot as well, you know that there is a poem for every day of the year and a poem for every night of the year. Well, there's a new one out, which is a poet for every day of the year, edited by Ali Asiri. And in this anthology, as it says on the cover, essentially, there's emphasis on a particular poet for each day of the year. So you still get a poem for every day, but you also get a lot of information about a particular poet too, which I really like. And you know, I'm such a sucker for poetry anthologies and I love to have a new one on my bedside to dip in and out of. And I love to read a poem a day, at least one poem a day. So I was really thrilled that they brought out another anthology in this series. Again, it's got a very beautiful cover too. So really special. And then for adults, I have to recommend this stunning book, which is The Owl and the Nightingale 
retold by the poet laureate Simon Armitage and it's got the most gorgeous illustrations by Clive Hicks Jenkins. This is actually a hilarious poem all about a fight between an owl and a nightingale and who reigns supreme and they have so much fun flinging insults at each other and Simon Armitage has just done an incredible job uh, retelling this medieval poem. I think it's such a fun read, I actually really enjoy it and you can see how special the illustrations are. I think they add so much to this volume. They're just utterly stunning. I love the details down to how some of the letters have been drawn as well. It's a really, really beautiful book. You get some tiny little illustrations in the pages as well. And yes, I just love it. So that would make a fabulous Christmas gift. And then we're going to move from poetry to some nature writing. So the first nature book I want to recommend is A Countryman's Winter Notebook by Adrian Bell. I recommended this book in my stocking stuffer video but I wanted to draw your attention to it again because I think this is stunning. It's published by Slightly Fox which is one of my favourite independent publishing companies. And this is such a lovely collection of Adrian Bell's articles all about winter and particularly the natural world. So some of the essays are Christmas specific but many of them aren't and it's just a wonderful ode to the season. So I think this would make a really stunning gift for anyone in your life who loves seasonal living and loves nature. Then this is a really fun book. It's a treasury of folklore, woodlands and forests. And it says that this is an enthralling collection of myths, folktales and traditions surrounding our trees, woodlands and forests from around the world. So this is just such a nice collection for anyone who loves nature writing but who also loves um, folklore and myths and it's just such an interesting read as well and a very beautiful book. Make a lovely gift. Then this book was a real favourite of mine. It came out earlier in the year and I absolutely love it. It's The Wild Isles, an anthology of the best British and Irish nature writing edited by Patrick Barkham. And the cover is by Angela Harding. You can see how beautiful it is. And there are so many British and, I and Irish writers featured in this book. It's just such a gorgeous anthology of nature writing. I have really enjoyed dipping in and out of this and it's made me discover some new writers too which is really wonderful. But that will make a wonderful Christmas present. And then this has been a real favourite of mine throughout 2021 too. It came out sort of right at the start of the year and that's Seed to Dust. A Gardener's Story by Mark Hamer. I think Mark Hamer is such an exquisite writer. The way he writes about a garden in particular but landscapes more generally, about the shifting seasons. He just has such a wonderful way with words. I absolutely love his writing and this book goes month by month through the year and I just so enjoy reading his observations of each passing month. I think this is a really beautiful book so definitely one I recommend. And then this is a book that I just got recently. It's A Tree A Day by Amy Jane Beer and it's exactly what it says it is really. Um, for every day of the year she tells you a bit about a particular type of tree and also about the significance of these trees in culture, in paintings for instance and really really interesting. I'm looking forward to 
having this book on my bedside table and looking at it through 2022 I only just got this one and it will be a wonderful bedside companion for me for the year ahead and I think this would make a lovely gift for anyone who really loves getting out into nature then I've mentioned this anthology quite a few times before and I wanted to talk about it again because I absolutely love this. It's called The Star-Nosed Mole by Isabel Bannerman and it's an anthology of scented garden writing. Isabel Bannerman is an amazing writer herself. She wrote a brilliant book called Scent Magic all about creating a scented garden but this is an anthology mainly of other people's writings and it's really a collection of quotations um, particularly relevant to nature and to the smells that you come across in the outside world and it goes sort of season by season it's illustrated with Isabel Bannerman's amazing photography I love her natural photography of plants I think it's just so stunning and I love the quotes that she includes in this they're really interesting and slightly less well-known ones too but they still really evoke each season very well so this has been a real favorite of mine then for the gardeners amongst you this book a year full of flowers by Sarah Raven would make a wonderful gift it says it's a book for gardening for all seasons and that really is what it is I love Sarah Raven I think she's fabulous I have so many of her books I love her website I'd love to do her courses one day um, but this book looks so good I just got it recently and it's full of advice on what to do in the garden each month, what flowers um, are lovely for every month of the year, as well as some ideas, for instance, how to make a Christmas wreath and things like that for different occasions throughout the year. So a really beautiful book as well. And then finally, this was quite a recent purchase of mine too, but I'm so enjoying looking through this already. That's A Year Unfolding, A Printmaker's View by Angela Harding. Angela Harding is a wonderful illustrator, a real favourite of mine. Um, she draws the natural landscape so well. Her work is a real celebration of the natural world. And you see so many stunning examples of her artwork in this book. Again, it takes you season by season through the year. And there are some sort of snippets from her diary and sort of observations of the natural world and a bit about what she was doing when she was creating some of these prints, for instance. Um, so there is some of her writing that goes through the book as well, which I enjoy. But the real standout for me in this are the amazing illustrations. Anyone who loves Angela Harding's prints would adore this book, I'm sure. It's really stunning. So those are my recommendations for nature lovers and now I'll get my books for foodies. Okay, so I've got some books for foodies and some amazing baking cookbooks for you. First of all, I have two books by Annie Gray that I thought I would share. I love Annie Gray's writing. She's a cook and food historian. I interviewed her many years ago now, and that was such a fun interview. And I'm always excited whenever she brings out a new book. And there were two by her this year. So this one, at Christmas We Feast is of course very appropriate and this looks at festive food through the ages so it looks at British traditions of Christmas food where those traditions came from and I think it would make a lovely gift for anyone interested in food history and in good food <laughs> of course too then this is a lovely foodie almanac it's The Kitchen Cabinet, A Year of Recipes, Flavours, Facts and Stories for Food Lovers. 
If you know the BBC Radio 4 show, The Kitchen Cabinet, then this book is a lovely companion to that show, but you can also just enjoy it by itself as a nice food almanac. And it's got lots of fun things for every month of the year. So for instance, January, it has key dates for food fanatics in the month, like Twelfth Night, for instance, Plough Monday, Burns Night. And it's got particularly particular foodie facts and they look at specific dishes sometimes like in January there's Bakewell pudding and oat cakes and it just looks like a really fun book to dip in and out of and to provide a bit of inspiration for you in the kitchen for every month of the year so lots of fun and then some baking books because you know how much I love to bake and winter is the perfect baking season I think. This is one I was really looking forward to getting that just came out this year. It's called Sugar I Love You by Ravneet Gill. Knockout recipes to celebrate the sweeter things in life. I love following Ravneet Gill on Instagram. She gives so many great baking tips and she's just a really fun presence to follow on the app. She's always got fun, funny anecdotes to share about her grandmother in particular who often makes a little appearance <laughs> on her Instagram account and Ravneet Gill is an amazing, oh there's her mum and grandmother <laughs> there and Ravneet Gill just is amazing at baking and she gives very sort of clear instructions. I have her previous cookbook too and I was really looking forward to this one coming out. There's so many recipes that I want to try in here so this just looks really really delicious. Another baking book I was very excited to get this year is The Sweet Roasting Tin by Rukmini Ayer. Again, I interviewed Rukmini years ago when the very first Roasting Tin book came out and it's been amazing to see her success ever since. I can't remember, I think this is at least the fifth or something in the series and I think it's the final one in the Roasting Tin series. Um, and I'm so glad she did one all about baking and sweet treats because I do love to bake and it's so exciting to get my hands on this cookbook. It really looks fabulous. Her recipes are generally so straightforward. She does a lot of classic recipes, but with interesting twists. So I think this one will be brilliant. Then I'm such a fan of the food writer, Dory Greenspan, and this Baking with Dory, which just came out this year, it looks set to be a real classic amongst baking books. I think I've heard so many people raving about this. I just got it recently myself and it's full of recipes I can't wait to try. She's got a recipe for apple pan downy in here, which I've been wanting to try to find a recipe for that for ages because there's an amazing song <laughs> that has that in the title. And it's just full of really delicious looking recipes in general. So, if you're into baking, I think that this is meant to be a real classic already and it will make a wonderful gift for any bakers in your life. And then finally, to end with something beautifully Christmassy, that's Advent, Festive German Bakes to Celebrate the Coming of Christmas by Anya Dunk. This looks fabulous. I love German baked goodies, especially at Christmas time, but this also has some delicious recipes for drinks and little nibbles as well. So just looking through this book makes me feel so festive. There are so many great recipes in here and I know I'll be using this in the run up to Christmas myself. But anyway, those are all of the books that I recommend, it made my Christmas gift guide this year. So I really hope that I've given you some inspiration. Good luck with your Christmas shopping. Of course, all these books will be linked down below so you can check them out there. But thanks so much for watching. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen over here.
but I'll be back again very soon. Take care everyone, goodbye.